eight of the strangest celebrity fans ever. Number eight, Bieber's wife. I'm sure there are plenty of Bieber fans who like to pretend they're married to him. Hey, whatever you gotta do to get through your day, I guess. One girl took it to another level though. Gabrielle Newton Bieber always refers to Justin as her husband. Notice what her last name is, and that should give you a big clue into her mental stability. Also, having a husband is a pretty big step for someone who's never even had a boyfriend before. Gabrielle believes that Bieber is her true love and she would never date anyone other than him. Although, she did say she's willing to settle for a Justin Bieber lookalike. So, yeah, how'd she get her last name Bieber? Basically, Gabrielle begged and begged her mom to let her change her name so that her fantasy marriage could be a little more realistic. Her mom denied the request at first, but eventually paid for the name change as a present for Gabrielle's 18th birthday. Who are these enablers? She's now legally named Gabrielle Newton Bieber. She also has a cardboard cutout of Bieber that she sleeps with and talks to. She has tons of Bieber merchandise and proclaims herself as having the biggest Justin Bieber collection in the world. She allegedly has purchased every perfume, DVD, and nail polish she's ever put out. She even has tattoos dedicated to him. She has Believe on one of her ribs and Bieber on the other. She also has two tattoos of Belieber underneath one of her boobs. Just how do these people exist? Number 7, The Assassin. On March 30th of 1981, John Hinckley Jr. shot President Ronald Reagan. But Reagan wasn't his only victim, as Hinckley stood outside of a Hilton in DC with a revolver and shot three other people as well. Why exactly did he do any of these crazy acts? He did it to impress Jodie Foster. He hoped that it would make her fall in love with him. How he reached the conclusion that the way to make a girl fall for you is by shooting people is beyond me. Foster was 19 years old at the time, he was 25. He actually wrote Foster a letter the day of the shooting where he said that he was sacrificing his life and freedom to gain her respect and love. He wrote that he hoped what he was about to do would help her change her mind about him, which makes no sense. It was later discovered that Hinckley had written multiple letters to Jody. It was Foster's role in the 1976 movie Taxi Driver that sparked his obsession to Foster, and he came up with the assassination attempt. The movie shows the disturbed main character, Travis Bickle, played by Robert De Niro, plotting to assassinate a presidential candidate. When Foster entered Yale University, Hinckley moved to New Haven, Connecticut for a short time to stalk her. He enrolled in a Yale writing class, began slipping poems and messages under Foster's door, and repeatedly called her. Failing to develop any meaningful contact with the actress, Hinckley fantasized about conducting an aircraft hijacking or committing suicide in front of her to get her attention. Eventually, he settled on a scheme to impress her by assassinating the president, thinking that by achieving a place in history, he would appeal to her as an equal. After his failed assassination attempt and subsequent capture, Hinckley was found not guilty of his crimes by reason of insanity and remained under institutional psychiatric care until September of 2016. John Hinckley was released from a psychiatric hospital to live with his mother in Williamsburg, Virginia after a federal judge ruled that he was no longer a danger to himself or others. He may no longer be a danger, but I'm sure it's still an eerie feeling for those who still remember the assassination attempt. Number 6. Let's have a drink! On April 3rd of 2017, a 24-year-old woman by the name of Misha Collins broke into Drake's home in Southern California. At about 10.30pm, one of Drake's friends found Misha chilling in a bedroom wearing one of Drake's hoodies. No one has any idea how she actually got into his home, but according to her and her vivid imagination, she was invited in. At least that's the story she gave to the police when they finally got her to come out of the room she locked herself in. It does make you wonder though, because although she didn't have permission to go inside Drake's house, there were no signs of forced entry. Where was the security team on this one? Unfortunately, she didn't just break into his home and wear his clothes. It looks like she may have had to have done some actual jail time as she was charged with felony burglary. 
The thing is, she didn't steal any of his jewelry or any of his money or anything valuable at all. She stole about $10 worth of things from Drake's fridge. After she was arrested, she confessed to stealing a Sprite, a Pepsi, and a Fiji water. Although this is nothing compared to the $3 million worth of jewelry that was stolen during Drake's summer 16 tour, the law is the law. Not only is the felony going to be on her criminal record, but let's not forget that she's going to have to forever deal with all the thirsty jokes. Number 5. Spider Killer You guys remember Moby, right? The DJ and animal rights activist with hit songs back in the day such as the songs Porcelain and Go? Apparently his fame is still at some pretty insane levels. In December of 2016, he finally reached his breaking point with one of his crazy obsessed fans and got a restraining order against her. According to court documents, crazy obsessed fan Kelly Lord apparently saw a condom in the bushes outside of Moby's home. She must really have a problem with litter because after she allegedly found this condom, she ran up to one of Moby's guests and accused him of throwing condoms around outside and asked him to show her where his car was so she could quote, destroy it. Of course, they told her to relax and hit the road, but a little while later, Moby's assistants found her hiding in the bushes. Yes, what a great idea, right? Hide in the bushes that you claimed you found a condom in. Although, Kelly of course says that she wasn't hiding, she was just, um, killing some spiders. Despite the restraining order in May of 2017, Kelly was spotted on security footage returning to the property. Technically, she wasn't on the property, but she's still supposed to be nowhere near him. 100 yards to be exact. Although the police were called, she was gone by the time they made it to the scene. Prior to this incident, Kelly was arrested for stealing Moby's mail and packages. Ugh. Number 4. Taylor Stalker, Ring My Bell Taylor Swift superfan and stalker Muhammad Jafar is another fan who's just took things a tad too far. Jafar wanted to see Swift so badly that he took the time to do surveillance and come up with a plan to make it happen. Swift has a penthouse in New York City and Jafar was somehow able to get in and do his thing. This all started back in December of 2016 when he visited her condo and requested a meeting with her. Of course, the request was denied, so instead of getting the you're a complete wacko hints, he decided to visit her multiple times over the next few months hoping for a chance to meet her. According to the court papers, he would just casually hang out on the roof in the middle of the night. He was also seen wandering around the hallways in the lobby. Not only did he somehow climb up to get to the roof, he rang Taylor Swift's doorbell for an hour straight one night, and then came back the next day to ring it for another 45 minutes. I'm sure he annoyed her management team too with the 59 calls he made demanding to set up a meeting. Finally, New York police charged him with stalking and burglary. He pretty much will never get his wish since a judge signed a protection order banning him from any contact with Taylor. After his arrest, his Twitter profile was discovered by none other than the master detectives at TMZ. He had sent plenty of disturbing tweets to Taylor stressing how important it was for them to meet and photos of love poems he'd written for her. Has this tactic ever worked out? Number 3. Just Say No Dante Soyu is a huge fan of Gwyneth Paltrow. All he ever wanted was for her to notice him so that they maybe could be good friends. And you know, hopefully fall in love and get married one day. No big deal. As romantic as that sounds, what Dante did to express his love was far from innocent. This dude sounds like some of the nice guys that I've made a video about before. In February of 2016, he admitted to jurors that he had sent Paltrow letter after letter after letter, but he only did so out of compassion. He said he wanted his messages to show her unconditional love and friendship, and that he had no hard feelings toward her after she testified against him in a previous stalking case back in 1999. Apparently, what happened over the span of 1999 and 2000 was that he had sent Gwyneth 500 letters. And, uh, oh yeah, uh, that also included some packages that contained sex toys and pornography. Ugh. He wanted to express his love so they could get married, and if they weren't going to get married, they could at least be friends, and he was fine with that. He wanted to show her that he was a changed person. But uh, seriously though, why so many messages? According to Dante, 
He kind of had a gut feeling that he might not want to, but all he needed was just closure. He wanted her to just tell him the cold, hard fact that she didn't want to marry him because, apparently, being charged with stalking and sent to a mental institution for several years where she didn't visit a single time isn't a big enough hint. Number 2. North Korea's Number 1 Fan You'd think Kim Jong-un's biggest fan would actually be someone super brainwashed in North Korea, right? Nope. A Chinese man by the name of Wang Li is such a huge fan of the North Korean leader Kim Jong-un that he got plastic surgery to make himself look like his twin. Well, okay, maybe not twin, but they actually at least look somewhat alike. His friends apparently have always told him that they pretty much look like each other, so he decided to go one step further and get plastic surgery to look as much like his twin as possible. He even wears Kim's signature gray suit and rocks the same strange haircut. So how did we even come to find about this random dude who wanted to look more like Kim Jong-un? While Wang Li was at his plastic surgery clinic going through his consultations, he ran into a top Chinese actress, Lu Zhuan. She had breast enhancement surgery and was in the clinic for a checkup exam. The two went out on a date and ended up hitting it off. Or at least that's how it was displayed in the media. The actress invited cameramen to their date and the story of the odd couple became an instant sensation. Now everywhere they go they're surrounded by fans and paparazzi. I'm not entirely sure if these two are actually dating but whatever. I'm still trying to imagine the look on the surgeon's face when he asked the guy what he wants done and he pulled out a picture of Kim Jong-un. Number one, try and say no. Imagine if you wouldn't marry someone and they said they sliced your throat if you didn't. That would instantly make you fall in love, right? Well, that's the sort of romantic idea Robert Dewey Hoskins had when he threatened to slice Madonna's throat if she didn't marry him. He gave someone in her staff a note saying that he would slice her from ear to ear if a marriage didn't happen. Um, how romantic? In May 1996, Hoskins was actually shot twice by Madonna's security guard after he scaled the wall to her home and jumped into her pool. He was arrested and served 10 years in prison for stalking and threatening Madonna as well as assaulting one of her bodyguards. After serving his sentence, he was sent to a mental hospital, but back in February of 2012, Robert somehow escaped. Authorities said that he literally just walked out of the Metropolitan State Hospital in Southern California without being noticed by anyone in the hospital. A full-scale manhunt was launched and he was finally captured after being on the run for an entire week. According to Long Beach Police, he was spotted walking down the street 10 miles away from the hospital. Shortly after being caught again, Robert's storage unit was auctioned off because of failure to pay rent. Some of the creepy things found in it included a butcher knife, a baby doll with no head, and a Barbie backpack. Here's what's next. Born as the great-granddaughter of the owner of the Hilton Hotels, this blonde princess doesn't even have to work that much to earn millions of dollars each year. Unless, of course, party appearances and occasional DJing count as working, which I guess it does sort of count as it does take a lot of late nights. In case